What's up everyone? Welcome back. So I'm so stoked. Louis dropped another song and I cannot wait to see what this one sounds like. Bigger Than Me was absolutely amazing. Blew my mind. And I've watched some of the interviews with him and I did some of the reaction set up like on the Patreon, which link is down in the description for that. But just listening to him talk about how excited he is for this album, how he feels like he's been able to open up and really right for him and for the show without any barriers, anything like that. I just can't wait to see what's been swimming around in his mind, what influences he's been wanting to use and just where this is going. So, but yeah, everybody on Twitter told me to wear punk rock stuff. So I know I'm just excited. Also two things, one merch. I am so excited. So I've got BM mugs. They've got me here. We've got t-shirts and the greatest thing of all, for those of you that don't remember, at the very beginning of the channel, I had like a Lana Del Rey fiasco where <laughs> I was like, I'm getting canceled. It was absolutely terrifying, but we got posters made for it. So check this out. This thing is huge. I had to tape it to something, but this was me in the car and it says this album fucking sucks. So if you want to get <laughs> one of the posters or a t-shirt or whatever mugs, um, there's going to be other things coming out as well in the near future. Please go and click the, hold on, let me move this. Yeah. I don't want it falling and I don't want it in the shot. So let's just stick it there. There we go. Um, yeah, please click the link down in the description. We're so excited about the merch. So, and very last thing before subscribe and Patreon, all that stuff. Um, another amazing artist, Max Schneider, he goes by Max, reached out to me and asked if I wanted to do like an interview and also react to one of his new songs. I've been listening to Max for a long, long time. And you guys know I love pushing other artists on this channel as well. And I'm excited to get back into that. Um, God, there's just so much going on. But at the end of this video, stick around. I'm gonna put the reaction to Max's stuff at the very end and also the interview and I'll put all of his links down in the description. So there's a lot of stuff. And also I've got so much planned for LT too. You guys are gonna flip. It's gonna be awesome. And also Taylor Swift Midnights. But that being said, let me grab my mouse up here. And we are going to jump in to Louis Tomlinson out of my system. Let's go. Oh, yeah. The bass, everything is, is set so well for his vocal here, which is, I just, I can't even begin to express to you. I feel like this is exactly where he has needed to be the entire time. Like, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh, I'm feeling it. Gotta get it out of my system. So like, like, um, it's like Arctic monkeys ish, you know what I mean? But, I, oh, that's cool. What? There was something else. Oh, yeah. Demons, I'm taking all of my demons, putting them where I won't see them, cause I just want rhythmic switch for that chorus like that's not what I'm expecting I'm expecting like like paramore big you know just full chords wall of sound chorus but it's so beautifully open and again the the interchanging of just rhythmic elements there on that chorus is so smooth and so nice and so perfectly balanced this is again where he belongs this is cool as shit this is Louis about to he's about to go System. Gotta get it out of my head. I've lived a lot of 
what this was written around. Oh. We're doing it twice. We're doing this twice. Hold on, I gotta listen to it again. That's fantastic. This is cool. I, I know I'm like overly excited right now, but it's also just because there are very few artists that I get this excited about because they're going to do the things that are like, that truly inspire them, you know what I mean? They're not being held down by all of these people saying, no, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. Louis is literally just doing what he wants to do with this and, you know, just happens to have the exact same kind of feel that I really just love in music. It's got a drive to it, it's got umph to it, it's got some grit to it, like, it's got some attitude to it. Man, all right, we're going again, because that's a short song. I just have to hear it. Like, oh man. two week because I'm doing I'm doing these artists by weeks now and I'm doing different kinds of content for the artists leading up to the reaction like you guys are gonna flip this is what I'm doing with the um, the Taylor Swift reaction but I might just do a drum cover to this I would love to do a drum cover to this that would be fun I'm only half of one. I think I can be gotta get it out of my system figuring out exactly what's going on there because it almost feels like it's like modulating but I'm not that good at theory. Gotta get it out of my system. Well done. I dig it. I dig it. I'm having Barrett do this one too. He's gonna love it. He's gonna flip. It's gonna be cool. I, I gotta go watch Stevens now too. We were talking about it yesterday on a um, like on a Zoom call that me, him, Barrett, and Caitlin were all on. And um, in April, she kind of helps run a lot of that stuff. But I can't wait. This is cool. Anyways, guys, enough of me just simping the entire time and just being happy that this kind of music is making a comeback and that people are fully supporting it and love it. I'm just, I'm proud, I'm happy, I'm excited, this is cool, I'm talking a lot. Um, again, if you guys want some merch, if you want this poster that says this fucking album sucks, I'm not gonna pull it out again, but you can scroll to the beginning and see it. Um, or just click on the links down in the description and check out Max, hang around for a bit. And um, till next time, I will catch y'all later. Well done, Louie. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. So I'm incredibly excited because an artist named Max actually reached out to me and asked if I would react to his brand new single, It's You featuring Keshi, and potentially do an interview. And honestly, I've been listening to Max's music for a really long time, um, like ever since the early YouTube days. And then I remember when 
I th- God, I think I remember it was so long ago when he dropped like his first solo single. And I was like, OK, right on. This is cool. Like, I really dug it. He's got a really great voice and there's a lot of feel in there. There's a lot of soul. There's a little bit of grit, some cool airiness, if I remember right. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to do this and I'm going to be interviewing him tomorrow. Um, so there's going to be sort of a change of scenery because I'm driving back to my apartment. But that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump in, stick around for the interview afterwards. It'll be a little cut up. The entire interview will be available on the Patreon. So go check that out, support the channel and we're going to jump in. So let's see what he's been up to. He's at featuring Keshi, which is nuts. It's you. Oh. Loving so easy to do. It's easy, baby. Oh, oh I dig it. Another Sunday afternoon. Okay, brilliant. Like dynamically already, you know, it's difficult as it is to take a song that's very, very, very chill like this and give it a dynamic. You have to rely on rhythmic tendencies in your vocal, like just changes in rhythm for your melodies, things like that, because you're not going to just go heavy. You're not going to belt, you know, unless the whole thing builds because you want to keep the song, you know, within sort of like the same kind of realm, unless you really do want to go crazy with it. But this has got such a nice, airy, soulful feel. Like I, I dig it so far. This is, this is sick. And I'm still in bed with you. It's simplistic too. Nothing and minimalistic, which is my favorite style. Order from that place you like. We don't need to go outside. Something about you feel so right. Can we stay like this forever? Nice. Why dress or whatever? I keep dreaming this somewhere. And he's he's singing this super up close to the mic. I keep dream like it's it's very 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 soft and very sultry, which is cool because that gives you an intimate feel, which is exactly what you want from the lyric. You know, I always talk about how the the music accentuates what the lyrics are trying to say and so you end up with this beautiful picture where everything works together when you do it right and so the way that you're singing it you know again how close you are to the mic all of those things are things that need to be accounted for and just thought about you know because when they all do line up you end up with something incredible we grow old together it's you yeah love and so is so um oh my gosh it's not it's not otis redding it's like it's easy easy baby well who is that it's like an old old soul singer Okay, that's so freaking Flight of the Concords. The, um, you're so beautiful, you could be a waitress. I'm totally bringing that up tomorrow. That is so Flight of the Concords, which I love. Absolutely love. It's just the jazziness is everything, you know. how that bridge just sort of brings you down and finally even though it's not this huge last chorus it still feels bigger than everything else because you're finally bringing in all those elements but you've brought you know the listener down into this space and now you're just throwing him right back into exactly where you want him to be so here comes that hook again and also that run up was absolutely cool so that was sick. it's easy baby Yeah, it's 
That's smooth. You know, I can't say I've ever heard him. Most of the stuff that I've heard him do, like, is a lot more forward, a lot more like belty, that kind of a thing. So this is really kind of a cool place for him to sit. And I dig it. I absolutely dig it. I'm excited to talk to him. I'm actually, I can't wait to pick his brain on some of this stuff. It's going to be cool. So anyways, guys, go stream the song. Um, I think he's got an album coming out pretty soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Subscribe to him, you know, follow him on Spotify, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. I'll put everything down in the description. So go check him out. This is going to be fun. All right. I'm going to cut to the interview. Hey, man, how's it going? Good. How are you, man? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good, dude. Just, you know. Another day. <laughs> Sorry, I, um, let me check on this because uh, my internet went out this morning, which sucks. So I'm just on 5G. I hope it works. It's oh, all shit. cute, but all good. We're here. Dude, I get it. <laughs> you know the so vibes. Sometimes yeah, man. Mercury retrograde. Am I, yeah, dude. Am I recording proper way for you? Um, actually, if you could flip it. Flip it like this? Yeah, if you could do that, that'd be sweet. Better? Right better, on, dude. No yeah, awesome, man. Better. I know, dude. I'm feeling the retrograde too. Like somebody told me about it yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, that explains so much." Like, so much. just throwing you out of whack, dude. Like, I had such a weird day. It was like felt just out of my body. I don't know. Oh, um, I'm sorry, man. No, you I'm know, sorry. you got Sometimes you just gotta feel the lows and feel yeah. the highs and feel it all. It's about the balance, dude. It's all about the balance. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. So like you've been mug. going freaking nuts. Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. This is like my eighth one. I break them all the time. So I do the same. I break yeah. everything. My wife's oh. like, yo, you need more with our with our zebra mugs as well. I have like a good monkey mug. Anyway, oh, yeah. Okay. How are you, man? Dude, I'm, I'm doing great, man. Like I said, just really trying to pump out some content and keep things going. And she's got a new manager. So working my butt off and she's whipping me into shape, you know? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So music, man, like you've got a shit ton going on. Yeah, man, just, yeah, just uh, working on this album and, yeah, just put out this this new song, which has been great, a little little taste of, of the album to come. Right on. So is it going to kind of go along the same lines or, like, just sort of have that feel? I mean, I went back and I listened to a bunch of music. I've actually been listening for a decent amount of time, man, like, back since, like, the early YouTube days. And, nice. um, yeah, dude, I was actually talking to um, somebody the other day. I'm doing these, like, celebrity song challenges. And at the end, I want to do... Um, like a cover, not a cover, but like a video, almost higher production, that kind of a thing for the song that we write. And so I was using a lot of your covers actually as like a reference, you know? Oh, cool. pretty cool. Yeah, man. But um, so I was going back and I was listening to some of your music, dude, and it, there's definitely a huge Bruno vibe in a lot of that stuff. And I can feel it on here a little bit too. There's also some like Flight of the Concords in there, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> Flight of the Concords, wow. I never thought that reference. I like that. Oh, dude, if you get like um, that, you're so beautiful. Like the, that's what it reminded me of on that little, uh, that little run. But, I feel um, like because my, my daughter watches Moana, like we've probably seen it 200 times uh, since she was born. And, you know, he's in, he's in the movie. He's the crab. So I hear that voice so often. Oh my God, you're right. He's the he crab is. When he's like, I'm so shiny. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. That's, you're right. Maybe subconsciously, some flight of the Concords somehow influenced it's you. I didn't even think of it. Dude, it's amazing how that happens, though. It just all of a sudden, like, you'll go and you'll write something and have no idea. It sounds kind of familiar, but I have no idea where it comes from. And you can't find it for the life of you. You're like, you know what? I'm just putting it out, whatever. And then somebody yep. just hears something. But that's sick, man. Um, so is it going to kind of, a lot of the music on the album going to still have this kind of like low-key, intimate, like chill pop flair? Or like, what are you thinking? I don't even know if you're allowed to tell It's kind of, it's definitely, there's there's just, I think the theme is just, just soul in general. Just, yeah. I'm just trying to make sure the soul is there. And uh, whether that's the genre of soul or just making sure that, that that warmth and that excitement's there. And even with, you know, some of the other songs, there's one called Say Less that that is really like digs into that 70s soul and, and the Wasabi song is a little more up-tempo. And, and so this one is is definitely the most chill of probably the whole vibe, but yeah. but it still sets the tone of really going for that warmth. Right on, dude. Right on. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's important to have a really good dynamic on an album, you know? whatever you do. I mean, you got to have those highs. You got to have the lows. You got to kind of pull them in, you know, otherwise you end up like secondhand serenade where everything is just right here, you know? Um, Definitely. Yeah, man. I'm stoked to hear it though. I mean, like I said, the singles you put out are amazing and you're working with some really, really cool people. 
Um, I saw sugar from BTS and stuff like that going on. I mean, how are you picking the people? I mean, is it, do they come to you or do you go to them or just feel like it'd be a good vibe or fit? I feel it's a combination of, of, of just sort of things being meant to be like with sugar, you know, he had just been putting songs of mine on his playlist on Spotify and anytime he would put a new one on, like my song, love me less uh, with Quinn or a couple different ones. I would just, you know, send out a tweet and just say like, thank you so much for, for giving love to the song. I just try to give those people. And then, you know, we met in Korea and then, you know, the rest is history. We ended up making the song and his song together for Burn It. So in those situations, I kind of just like see when someone gives love and if I'm a fan of theirs as well, which I was, I gave love back, we make something. Um, with Ketchy specifically, I was just a fan of his music and I had been seeing so much of stuff bubbling and and I slid in the DMs and I was just like, hey man, your music's dope. And, and he felt the same way back. And so, you know, we wrote that song one of the first times we hung out in my home studio and it just happened so naturally. And and uh, so it's like a combination of, you know, shoot your shot when you're a big fan of somebody and also like let the universe provide. So that's sort of my, my method. I try not to force anything ever. It always has to feel natural. There's no reason to do it. Totally, man. Totally. That's so awesome that that song came so fast. Those are some of the best ones. You know, you just write them in like under five minutes and everything just flows right out, you know? Oh, totally. It really, it's hard because when you're writing a lot, you you keep trying to get back to that feeling of like, it just is natural. And that's actually the hardest part, I feel like, because so often, you know, it's, 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 it's days and days of trying to get to that place. But once you do get to that place and you're just sort of open for the song to come, it's spectacular. There's nothing more yeah. magical. You know, that's actually something I was I was going to ask you, you know, because I'm a songwriter myself and I do, you know, production and things like that. Like, do you have anything specific that you do to get past that writer's block area? Because I know I go through it all the time where it's like months on end. It's like nothing. I, I hate everything that I'm writing. You know what I mean? Or just continuing to try. It, I, I feel like we all feel the same way. That's so often you just like you hit that block and there's the only answer I've ever found is just continually finding the little sparks, finding the little nuggets. Like if a little 10 second idea comes to me, I try to get it in that moment. Cause I feel like you think you're gonna remember it or you think that it's gonna come, but you know, Dolly Parton is my, one of my heroes. And she's always saying like, when it comes, you, you gotta write, you gotta write it down. You just gotta go for it. Cause that's when you're getting that little piece from, from the energy of the world. Yep, it's so true, man. Like, you know, they come to you and yeah. You know, they just come in little tiny bits. They come to you in dreams, you know, whatever. And you just got to have your phone and stick it in and get it done like right away. You know, a lot of people don't understand that. So that's yeah. cool. Mappy, I'm not crazy. <laughs> but, oh, um, yeah. No, you're not. I, we're all the same. We're all just like trying to think there's no there's if there were a secret, there would just be. I feel like that would, you know, it wouldn't be fun because that's the magic is, is, is finding those ones, you know. Yeah. And uh, but the diligence, I think it's, it's definitely a play, like find whatever way finding that confidence to get in touch with with those emotions and vulnerability that's that's really the only thing i'm in a lot i'm in therapy every week now i'm just trying to like access those emotions just because that usually is the hardest part to just feel okay saying something yeah uh, totally you know it's it's like i just watched the elvis movie and what was it that um oh my god there was a quote in the movie and it was like when it's not okay to say it sing it you know what i mean and that's so true because it's just that threshold and it's like i don't know if i want to but you're so right. Totally, man. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it yet. My, my wife's been wanting to see the Elvis movie so bad. So I used to take these dance classes with Austin. And when he was dating Vanessa Hudgens, my ex and I would, we would do these like private dance classes. And, and we, I haven't seen him since then. <laughs> then I, now he's Elvis, which is so cool. So That's so crazy. Yeah, he spent like two years apparently on the roll, which is... Oh blows my mind you, i can just tell from the interviews i feel like that's like the internet meme him just becoming it but it, when you really become it and you access that that truth i mean it's no wonder that he kept some of it with him you know yeah yeah man totally is there like anybody that influences you like that much that you've kind of i know most artists end up trying to do it at some point but sort of like be like a specific person or sing like a specific person or i want to write music like that like did that happen with this album or any of the music you've done recently oh totally i love i mean i'm always just trying to be inspired by artists that 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 always seem to access the truth and are very you know transparent and authentic and for me dolly parton is that number one always that she's my she's my one for that uh, and then, of course, like old school soul stuff. Like I love, you know, of course, Michael Jackson, Etta James, James Brown, Stevie Wonder. 
Uh, and then I'm a New York boy, so I've been actually listening again to a lot of Billy Joel. Just like great songwriting is 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 what I love the most, regardless of genre. Yeah, man. God, he's just amazing. You know, he actually struggled for most of his life with trying to find his voice and never felt like he found it, which blows my mind. Really? Yeah. Um, I got to meet him in like a, a thing a long time ago, you know, and it was like before I actually got in the industry and stuff. Um, but yeah, he was talking to like everybody because um, I booked him for a, it was like a small like acoustic show thing. And um, that was one of the things he was saying is like he just never felt like he actually found his voice, which is why like Uptown Girl, it's Frankie Valley. He's obviously kind of trying to give it that Jersey voice vibe, you know, and you can hear his voice change over the years. But, you know, it's just crazy to me that a lot of artists, as they continue to grow, they still never fully feel comfortable with themselves or their vocal. I feel like yours is a little different. I mean, you know, you feel like or you seem like you've been in it for so long and just found that comfortability in your vocal and in your style which is cool man uh well I'm, I'm grateful to hear that man i i feel like i definitely relate to the billy joel thing though too you know it's you're constantly trying to refine yourself or find you know what you feel like your sound is or i feel the same way often like i want to write a love song like it's you and i want to write a an uptown kind of dancey funky song like wasabi they're just like so different and yet i they're both part of me and so it's hard to say like do i only do the ballad thing but no they're both that's who that is my thing and, and I love both and that's that is the st struggle as an artist for sure to figure out do you have to stick to one to make it your sound or is all of it your sound so I am um, I'm, I'm grateful to actually hear that he says that because he's one of the best ever so if he if he struggles with it then then we all gotta feel it then it's fine we're all good but yeah dude so like um oh my gosh what was I gonna ask you because it was right on those same lines um oh yeah so like with some of the music that you have on here like on the album you know, you do say you kind of jump around, you know, influence here, influence here. You kind of want to do a funk one like this. And I, everybody has the same problem. Like, I can't listen to something completely outside of what I'm trying to write. Like, you know, f I'm, I don't know, for like weeks, because otherwise it'll just throw you in another thing. And you're like, I want to do that. But how are you finding um, through the production and through the writing and everything, just commonality and kind of gluing everything together? So it has, you know, a signature sound to it. For me, it's it's been really, I actually have a really good friend, uh, Cody, who I've been co-writing almost all of it. He's on It's You as well. And he plays live in my band. And this whole album, I've been really grateful because we've been traveling kind of around the world for these different shows and he's always with me. So he's really helped me stay consistent with his incredible like synth and keys and playing. So instrumentally, we're both inspired by the same sort of 70s soul genre world. And so that helps me keep my head focused on that part of the sound. And then as far as the stories, you know, I just had a baby a couple of years ago now and, and those pieces of these like life changing moments um, and just accessing what it feels like to just have your life completely shift wherever it is. So being vulnerable with the chapter of life I'm in mixed with like really staying consistent with those instruments and that sound and that funkiness and that soulfulness, that's, uh, that's how I've, I've picked which songs feel like this project and I've done like a hundred in those other songs that maybe don't feel quite right I've I've you know given to other artists which has been really special just because you know you love songs sometimes but they're just not right for the thing you're going for but you still love it just as much it's still your baby so that's been a tough thing it's almost like oh this one's not quite right for the album but what what do you do with it it's too yeah. good not to give somewhere so that's uh, that's sort of the stage of it right on dude right on so you write all the freaking time I mean it's just uh, kind of always coming out yeah, I mean, it's it's both that and, and I make I mean, you know, I have this I get to collaborate a lot. And I think when I'm when I love collaborating and co-writing, mainly because it gets me on my having a personal trainer, you're like, oh, man, I'm in the studio today. God, let me write a little idea and see it, it influences me to stay in that gym of songwriting and not let myself just like, you know, completely back away from it. Because I think the thing for any songwriter, I'm sure you relate to this, is when do you give it breath, like to stay away from it so that you can find inspiration? And when do you have to kind of push yourself a little bit to see if you're in the right space to let it in? And I feel like Pharrell is also one of my, one of my favorite, you know, producers and heroes. And he says the same, like, you gotta show up, you gotta keep showing up. So I, uh, I try to find that balance, but it is also really fun to like kind of get there and think you don't want to write the song, but then the best song comes out. So it's like, you hear that about Adele and all these great artists who went into the studio and like wrote their biggest song because they're like, oh, I wasn't even going to show up today, but I just had this breakup or whatever. I don't feel like, but that's where the song comes out. So you have to set it up for that. 
It's so it's so true, and they always come when you least expect it. Like um, I actually just did uh, a road EP with my new band, and I went through a long, long thing. And literally on my car ride home, I wrote like all the songs, just like had my phone on voice notes and it's just the lyrics start coming. It was like, I didn't want to do it at all, but you're right. That's the best time, man. And it all just starts kind of flowing out of you, you know? Yeah. 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 Sometimes you just got to let it pop out. I love yeah, That's man. great to hear that it just came out of you in this natural way. There's nothing, a few things as magical as when it's flowing. It's, that's the truth. You know, it's frustrating when it isn't, but when it does, it just all goes like a giant river, but so with some of these new ones, I mean, are your family kind of in, like influencing the songs, you know, in a lot of different ways? I mean, things have changed so much for you, like you said, over the past, yeah. what, two years? Oh, always. They're always, they're, they're the muses um, for pretty much everything. And I'm always trying to find, because they're, they're the most successful muses. It's so, uh, and, and it's so natural to write about them. It's been, I also want to, I've been trying to be more vulnerable with other muses of, of, you know, my mental health or other pieces that aren't just outside of myself um and actually it was so funny i was talking to keshi who's on the it's you song of course we were together the other day celebrating the song and he showed me a new song of his that's coming out and we were talking about how the person he wrote it with he was like talking to them and they ended up telling him a really intimate story that happened to hit them and then he wrote a song for his project about that experience for the other person and i just really unlocked my mind because I think as an artist, you think you always have to write about your thing, mm -hmm. but how special just to be able to tell the story as long as whoever you're making with this, you know, it's authentic. The story is there. It doesn't necessarily have to happen to you no. as long as it is a real story. Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, you know, just relating here so many times, like I've been in writer's blockers on my end, then somebody will come to me and they'll tell me a story. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. And I'll come back three hours later with this whole thing. I just did it with um, my mentor from law school. She has this insane voice. In fact, she came down and I was kind of pulling it out of her a little bit. And she was like, I can't belt. I can't belt. And I was like, yeah, you can just trust me. You know, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. And all of a sudden she just had this beautiful, like, like Juliet Sims, like grit to her vocal and just soul and everything in it. And I was like, oh my God, I know where to take this. And she started talking to me about all the things she was going through and everything and just wrote the song right there. I mean, it just comes right out, dude. And it's, so true. You know, when you open yourself up to those other muses and those other people and other people's experience, we're all connected anyways, you know? So mm -hmm. just let yourself, you know, let yourself be a part of it if it's good. Yeah, <laughs> You know what I mean? Amen. Amen, dude. Amen. That's, that's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah, dude. But I am so, so excited. You, I saw you play Coachella too, man. How was that? Uh, yeah, it was spectacular. You know, it was my friend Ali Gaddy and he's on my song Butterflies with me and and uh and he asked me to come and do the song both weekends and it was uh it was really special obviously you know coachella is such a such a such an iconic festival to get to perform at um and doing that song specifically was so fun and all my friends i think i got so overwhelmed that the, mo the most hilarious part every time i look at the video is we're on stage and ali was really nervous it was like his eighth show ever was coachella and he's out there and the first night i could see how nervous he was and i was like man i want to just enjoy this so I get out on stage and this, you know, this chill song, Butterflies, I get out on stage and I was really energized. And so towards the middle of the song in, in the video, you could see I'm like, I'm like singing the butterflies bit and sing that shit, Ali. And then he sings the next part. It was just such an aggressive, like sing that shit, Ali. Like, so let's go. Yeah. They're like, I won't stop. Get, but I'm so glad that that was the first Coachella performance because I feel like I almost got out of my own nerves seeing a friend of mine on stage and just yeah. wanting him to re enjoy that memory and moment and then us sharing it and seeing him then like get out of his nerves it was so fun it really ended up being just like two friends getting out on the stage and then realize like oh my god this is Coachella forgot there's all these people here oh that's yeah. so cool dude man so you're pretty nervous going in though like it really kind of I rarely get nervous it's always random little things and yeah. it's always when I am not nervous and then I think, wait, should I be nervous? Right. Yep. And then it hits you harder. You're like, oh, no, wait, now I'm completely messed up in your own brain. That that happens to me a lot with like TV performances when they're truly live or that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, when it's yeah, you know, they're like three, two, one. And then you just know there's no going back. Like This yep. is live. And if I sound bad, the whole world's going to know, you know, so uh, 
but those moments really make you feel alive too. So I try to like soak in the nerves when they happen and breathe. But yeah, the, the psych out is always crazy when you oh, yeah, psych dude. yourself into being nervous. And then just like, you know, every once in a while, I'm sure it's happened to you. Um, you know, you have one of those moments where you actually do mess up and it's live or something like that. And it's a, you have to handle it and you have to learn how to deal with it and just sort of accept it, you know? But have to. Yeah. Have to. Has there ever been like a terrible one that happened to you? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> my favorite one was when I was, uh, a song of mine called Lights Down Low, I was doing on, um, it was the day after the Oscars and they did Kelly and Ryan as a TV, a live, a morning TV show, uh, like Ryan Seacrest and, and Kelly and, and they had it on the Oscar stage. And the next day we were performing the song with a choir. Like we did Lights Down Low live on the Oscar stage. It's like six in the morning, so early. And so, you know, of course you think with that kind of production and crew, like no worries. But of course my partner Ryan is always worried for the worst thing to happen. So we're standing there on stage, it's just a piano and a full gospel choir. And as you hear Ryan Seacrest being like, and now live with Lights Down Low, and you hear the click in the audience. And we realize that somebody on the crew has plugged in the wrong in ear. Yeah. The tracks, the click is in the live stream and not the tracks. Oh no. And so we're live. We're in that moment. And he looks at me, he's like, what are we doing? Look, he's yelling at a crew guy. They're announcing us. Like we have to perform within 30 seconds. Yeah. So I give credit to my man, Ryan. He just unplugged everything. And we just went raw, like no click. The whole gospel choir was so pro. And we just, have this magical moment where we just did it with no click or anything, just raw and did the song live. But that 30 seconds felt like a million years and yeah. realizing it was about to hit, hit us. And man, I'm there right now thinking about it. So you never know what's going to happen. You just have to be prepared for anything and roll the punches. Dude, isn't that the truth? Honestly, I've played significantly smaller shows than you, but if it makes you feel any better, worst thing that ever happened to me was I was playing um, at like a, Thing for Miss Florida or whatever and she was like standing right there I was like oh, this, she's absolutely gorgeous and I'm like sitting there and I went to go I was playing Lost Stars I don't know if you've ever heard that song by um, Adam Levine he yeah he's got this bit where he goes up like full um, chest voice and then it transitions up into this I thought I saw it like way high up in there and I had just learned and I just immediately just tensed up and cracked going into it and could not find my way out of it and I was like oh man just kill me now like this is terrible absolutely terrible but not even mildly as bad as that like a nothing like a voice crack in the middle of an intimate moment it was a bad one dude I had people filming I was like delete it I don't want to see it delete it <laughs> I know what I did but um yeah man you know I almost feel like the click thing too you know how did it feel playing without one did it kind of I don't know it's just I feel like there's a different ebb and flow there absolutely is. And I think, you know, it, it definitely makes you listen more and you're almost even more present because I tend to rush without a click. Yeah. So it always feels slower with the click and I had to get used to that. But yeah, there's nothing like just being in a moment with no, nothing, nothing robotic or mechanical. You yeah, just nothing have you. to be connected to whoever else is making that moment of music with you. And that's, uh, that's, that's where it came from. So the more we can do it, like, that the better yeah i completely agree man it's kind of cool you know um so i won't keep you too much longer dude but you know production wise and everything i mean like what has been your favorite part about doing these songs and like actually putting them together and has there been any moments that it's just kind of like aside from the one you told me earlier where it's like oh okay this is where we need to take this or something just interesting maybe that you did you know like oh. um uh, i mean i mean you know it's just because it's so fresh with, with it's you with Keshi. I, I just remember he's such a good guitar player. Like whenever I have friends who I collaborate with, they're so much better at <laughs> instrumentalists than I am. I just like let them do it. I'm just floored and I just want to soak it in. And I have this video on my phone of when he, play, he plays this incredible guitar lick. It's like, -da 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 it goes into the chorus and it's, I could never do it. And it's one of those moments where when you're making something and it's our song, what a cool thing that like, he added his flair in that moment and the of just hearing that lick and knowing that I could never do it and he did it and now that's the production like yeah. wow it's there's that it was it just it just resonated with me because I think that's one of the coolest things about music that when you do get the chance to co-write or collaborate you're each putting yourself into it and, yeah. and that becomes what it is and it wouldn't be that way without the other person 
it literally just breathes life into the music, you know, and it's, that's why doing it on your own, it's not really meant to be done on your own completely, you know, like collaborating yeah. with people is the greatest thing you can possibly do. And a lot of people don't understand that. I, I, I just love like seeing the Beatles docs or any of that stuff, how they bounce off each other, how something, yeah. someone finds something in you that you would have never found in yourself. My other like favorite story ever of, of that. I just had a song on my first album and the singer from Fall Out Boy's name is Patrick Stump, like the best vocalist ever, such a great writer. He wrote so much this song soul, dude. that's still one of my favorites ever that I play. It's called 10 Victoria's Secret Models. And it was just me and Patrick in this room. And he was like, we're not going to write anything. I just want to talk for two hours. So I did kind of told him what I was going through. And he's like, all right, cool. I want you to leave uh, till tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? No, okay. can I come back like in an hour? He's like, all right, cool. Come back in an hour. And I come back in an hour. And he's like, you know, when we were talking, I was writing down some stuff. And you said this interesting thing about how if 10 Victoria's Secret models walked on this train, you wouldn't have taken your eyes off your wife. And I really like that. So I wrote this little hook idea. And then he's like, even if 10 Victoria's. And it just was like, I didn't even realize I said that. And I would have never thought that could be a good lyric. And yeah. you made it the best lyric ever. And that was the moment that changed everything for me. That was the moment where I was like, wow, really listen to the people you're working with because that other person's going to find something so much more magic that might have been in that room that you would have never you just ignored you know yeah. so that true collaboration of listening to each other and, and having faith that was the moment for me that's cool man and you know you learn something from them too like what you just said you know i know patrick stump he can pretty much you just hand him the phone book and he can make it into a song you yeah. know and that's yeah. probably from just like reading through pete's lyrics and being like all right this is perfect just singing it and seeing what comes out you know but right, totally then that's honestly, that just kind of opened it up for me too. It's so cool. You know, you can just kind of sit there and play with it. And it's all about the phonetic, how you kind of, you know, finagle it, how you move it. And that's, that's so sick. Um, yeah, dude, I can't even imagine that. That's an awesome story though, but right on dude. So that being said, I mean, is there anything else maybe that you're just extremely excited about with the album that I don't know what you're allowed to say, what you're not, but, um, Oh yeah, no, I'm hyped. You know, it's funny. Cause I wanted to, I'm, you know, we're doing this tour all over the U S in the fall and I wanted the album done for it. And I almost didn't do the tour, but then I was like, you know what? I kind of want to be inspired because I have an album done, but I just felt like it wasn't good enough yet. And so I'm kind of excited because I have, I'm basically going to like, get the final inspiration from doing this tour and then finish it while we're on the tour, which I've never done before. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of playing the songs that are out live and then kind of playing songs early for people. Cause it really does change as I show it to people. Like a lot of times I'll show a production to like 10 people and then it becomes something totally different if I see a consistent piece. So totally. yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hyped for people to hear a lot more like funky up, up tempo soul stuff. And then, you know, there's some really vulnerable stuff. Like I wrote a song for my daughter uh, when she was in my arms, when she was first born. And it's just named after her. And that's on the album. It's called Edie Celine. So when the right time to put that one out finally is, I hope people really love that Dude. one too. Well, when it does come out, I'll... I'll push as much as I can. Like, I mean, I'm definitely going to go listen. That's awesome, dude. You're a cool guy. And honestly, I'm stoked I got to meet yeah. you, man. Seemed very down to earth. So this was a lot of fun. Um, hey, brother. Yeah, man, I'm excited. So keep me updated on everything. Obviously, I'm just going to yeah. keep watching stuff. And um, Perfect. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. If you ever want to do another Anytime one you want to come to a show, let, let us know. And, and we'll put you on the guest list and love to have you out. Love yeah, man. You are, you, are you out of LA? Are you out yeah, of yeah. LA? I'm in New York right now. That's why we couldn't, you know, kick it in person. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm, uh, I, I bounce between the two. So yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm actually the down Wilson in Florida. Florida. So I'm down in Florida. Oh, you're in, in Tampa. Florida? Yeah. Oh, so, oh, Tampa. I'm playing Tampa. I'm playing at, at the Orpheum. So yeah, oh, literally. Great. It's right at the street. I go there all the time. Bring, so. bring the whole gang. You, 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 I got you. It's a fan. <laughs> will do, man. Will do. Cool, dude. Well, Pleasure, brother. Have a great awesome day. Talk nice to you, man. meet you. Yeah. yeah it was nice to meet you too. too. Pleasure. You Please got this do. all good. It's all recorded. All sounded good. You think? I think so, man. If there's any problems, I'll let you know. And I'll send you what I have. I think my camera's Sounds good. Weird, but all right, dude. Thanks, Blake. Peace, brother. Peace, man.